Okay, so the iPad Pro, M4 iPad Pro is out and I wanna talk about it, mainly because I haven't personally seen an upgrade to my iPad since the iPad Air 4 from 2020 or the iPad Mini 6 from 2021. While the iPad has had a rather noticeable overhaul alongside a massive power increase, I keep seeing initial reviews saying that it's not all that different from the M2 iPad Pro. Now, even though I love the latest and greatest tech as well as being a tech YouTuber, I don't think many people are gonna be upgrading from an M2 iPad Pro. So while I might reference other iPads a little bit, this review is more so gonna be an individual review for this iPad Pro itself, mainly because I think it deserves it. So with this engineering masterpiece, what makes this so special to me? Truthfully, it's just the right piece of tech at the right time. And when it comes down to this video, at least in reality, you're not gonna see any sort of benchmarks or spec comparisons or any sort of in-depth review on the spec side of things. Mainly because I don't really care to do that. There's lots of other people that talk about that a lot better than myself anyways. What today's video will be though is more so a user experience review. For myself at least, I'm one month into having my second kid, which has been a stark difference from having just one semi-self-sustaining three-year-old. With that though, I'm seriously finding it harder and harder to find time at my desk where I can get most of my creative and productive work done. Hence the baby stroller, greenfield, and iPad. Going for a walk is one of the few ways I can get him to sleep. I'm sure other parents can relate to that one. Now obviously my M2 Mac Air is portable enough to take around with me while I balance myself, a family, as well as my obligations, but they also don't make an 11 inch MacBook. And just so I'm not lying to myself, this is the first time I think I've actually been super excited for an iPad release, so I figured it'd be time for me to really see if I can push my workflow on this marvel of a machine. For reference on my day to day though, I'm an accountant where I use a lot of Outlook as well as Microsoft Teams and a disgusting amount of Excel spreadsheets. I'm also a creator that loves to make videos as well as a super tired gamer dad that's grasping at any chance to play games whenever I can. Now, can this iPad cover me for all this? I don't know, probably, maybe, I don't really know just yet, but in the little bit of time that I have had with this iPad, it has been wildly impressive. Okay, so to keep spec simple for the M4 iPad Pro that I got, this one that I got is actually the space black one with the one terabyte regular screen. I didn't think to go for the nano texture display because I don't think it really fits what I need particularly. Plus, I didn't want to pay extra for it. I did decide to go with the one terabyte mainly because it doubles the RAM as well as some extra cores in there. Will I need all that? I don't really know, probably not, but I do need that extra storage, so why not? But overall, from a creative standpoint, so far just about every single expectations I've had on this iPad has been shattered, especially coming from an iPad Air 4. Now, I won't lie, my favorite iPad still remains to be the iPad Mini 6, but I will be saving that for another day, another video. Still, this iPad has been beyond incredible. I will say this video you're watching right now was fully edited in Final Cut Pro on iPad version 1.3, Version 2 won't be out for a bit, so this has been just fine. And so far, obviously it's not the same as the desktop version, but it's been pretty good. I'm shooting this video on a Sony FX30 in a mix of S Cinetone as well as some HLG profiles in 4K, and this iPad straight up rips through all of this footage. And yeah, for this process I did get the Magic Keyboard, which has also exceeded all of my expectations, but everything about this iPad can be done without that keyboard. Still, this is my first iPad Magic Keyboard, and I really do dig how well this works with the keys and Taptic trackpad. And the wild thing for me is that this tablet, this thin sheet of glass is more powerful than any computer I've ever owned, including my desktop PC. Kind of crazy, but this means I can edit everything I need anywhere I go. And previously, I would have really thought this was all a gimmick up until having next to no time with a new one month old baby. Now, is this for everybody? Absolutely not. But being able to fully edit my videos while walking around with a baby strapped to my chest or being stuck during nap time is just one of those things that I have a weirdly disproportionate amount of value to. And that specifically is not possible at all with a laptop. That is definitely a niche scenario, but to me, that has great value. Now, even without all that stuff creative-wise, this is still an iPad, so this does come as a great companion piece for whenever I am doing my day job as an accountant. Teams and Outlook specifically are simply awful on PC, but they somehow run perfect on iPad, despite being made by Microsoft. For me, it comes down to using Stage Manager with all those simple apps and being able to whip around my YouTube, music, work apps, whatever the hell it is, and it just works day to day. And of course, that Magic Keyboard does make that process a hell of a lot easier, including the Apple Pencil. Even just using the Stock Notes app has always been my go-to while I'm at work, and I usually use a mix of Notion and Freeform to flesh out every single video I make on this YouTube channel. And what does help that whole process, whether it's my creative or 
professional work is from today's video sponsor, Paperlike. This is their Paperlike 2.1 screen protector, which does apply right to your iPad display and helps replace that unnatural feel of writing direct on glass, replacing it with the natural feel of writing on paper. This does come in a pack of two and it's available across many different iPad models, which I've currently got installed on both my iPad Pro and iPad mini 6. Not only does this help protect your screen from scratches and abrasion, but it also gives you that true to life paper feel with Apple Pencil. Using their nano dot technology, Paperlite 2.1 does a great job at keeping your display looking clear, all while giving you that natural paper feel. And as somebody who's currently starting from the bottom up in Procreate, this is easily a must have. And for anybody who's tempted by Apple's nano texture display on the new iPads, while similar, those don't really give you the haptic feedback you get like writing on paper by using this screen protector. And something that's absolutely specific to me is simply having less smudges and fingerprints on my iPad, just a little bonus for me that I really grew to appreciate. If you are a heavy pencil user like myself, be sure to check out Paperlike 2.1 link down below in the video description. And thanks again to Paperlike for sponsoring today's video. Now I've talked a lot about this iPad and its portability, which is definitely one of its strengths, but we're also at the point now where deskability or whatever you want to call it is also one of its strengths. For myself, I have two desk setups, one down here in my basement where I really get to my focusing and gaming and one in my bedroom for the times where I'm really tied up with my kid and I'm desperate enough to try to get some work or gaming done. In this case, I'm working on a project right now with Gigabyte on their new 49 inch OLED monitor and I did decide to see if this iPad works with Stage Manager. Surprisingly enough, it does, and Stage Manager makes it that much more impressive. If we are talking about trying to replace your computer with an iPad, this is probably the closest I think I've ever seen it. And to me, that is wild. Of course, you have use of both the screen on the iPad itself, as well as all the real estate of your massive monitor. I've got Notion, YouTube, music, reminders, and it's all hooked up with both my keyboard and mouse. Is this something that a lot of people will do? Probably not, but the fact that you can do it is amazing. And trust me, I know it's not all work, 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 because when it comes down to this iPad, it is still an entertainment and gaming beast. And as somebody who's an absolute nut for OLED displays, this is probably one of the best ones I've ever seen. My iPhone's an OLED, my TV's an OLED, my monitor's an OLED, and now my iPad's an OLED. And for me at least, I simply prefer the way OLEDs look with their literal blacks and insanely good colors. Right now, this is on my 4K OLED screen, also in Stage Manager, and again, this is just top notch. Now when it comes down to gaming on the iPad, I can't say I particularly care about the arcade ones, I know there are some AAA titles in there that are pretty sweet like Assassin's Creed. I'm looking forward to trying those out. But when it comes down to gaming for me, I'm probably gonna be remote playing on my PlayStation 5 or probably hopping into one of the new emulators that are now available on the App Store. Not to mention this screen simply gets so bright, especially for HDR content. Now, none of the gaming I'm doing on my iPad is gonna tax the M4 chip at all, but I know I'm well future-proofed for those AAA titles that I will eventually wanna try out. And if anybody else here watching is a parent, let's be real, half the time you're probably gonna be giving up the TV to watch Bluey or the Wiggles. So if you you are looking to watch something and you're banished to the small screen, this does still give you that badass watching experience. A restful parent is a good parent. I'm personally still working my way through Dexter and watching some animes as somebody who's just discovered anime in the last year, apart from Dragon Ball Z. I would probably guess the speakers on the 13 inch model are gonna be better, well, because of physics and all that, but the stereo speakers on the 11 inch here are still wildly loud and they do get super full. As for the front camera, it's simply okay. I can't really complain too much about it. The ultra wide mode is still always hilarious. The further I am to the edge, the fatter my jaw gets. Still, the camera is now centered, which is always a huge plus. And it's also easy to forget this thin slab of gorgeous metal and glass also has a set of speakers, a microphone, and a camera. Is it the best ever? No, definitely not. But if you do need something in a pinch, it definitely does the job. Opposite that though, the rear 12 megapixel camera is decent enough and I've actually used it to throw down a couple clips in this video as well. So like I mentioned, it's good in a pinch. The microphone is a mic, easy to forget, but good nonetheless. For me, it's great if I do need to lay down some riffs on my guitar so I don't forget them and even the odd voiceover if you do need to. So yeah, really not that bad, great to use in a pinch. Let me be clear though, I've shown a lot of me using this iPad with both the pencil and expensive keyboard, and honestly, the entire package is super expensive, almost that of a MacBook. With that, while the experience using both of these is really freaking good, you don't need them. You really don't have to get them. Maybe the Apple Pencil, that one I don't think I could go without, but I could definitely go without the keyboard. Even without the Magic Keyboard though, it's easy enough to sub in your own. Like right here, I did try my super tiny New5 Folio, for example, which more than gets the job done. Add in a wireless mouse or trackpad and you're definitely all set. Now with everything I talked about, who is this iPad for and is it worth it? Those both sort of go in hand, but if you're somebody like myself who really hasn't upgraded in a long time, 
it's most definitely worth it if you can see the value and benefit from it. Compared to my iPad mini or iPad Air 4, it's not even in the same league at all. But in truth, I'm still gonna use the hell out of my iPad mini 6 for the tablet only things like reading eBooks or for the times I really do need something more compact. But outside of that, for everything I use my MacBook Air for, this iPad could replace that entire workflow. Would it do it as well? Absolutely not. But for something this thin and light, that's still really impressive. But if you are looking for a more minimalist workflow or something that's simply different from what you have been using, this is definitely a great option. And let me be honest, because I'm sure a lot of people watching this video probably already have the M1 or M2 iPad Pro. You really don't need to justify getting the M4 to anybody but yourself. If you want that new shiny thing, get the new shiny thing. You don't really need to listen to random people on the internet, which sort of includes me if I'm being honest. I've glorified the hell out of this machine because for me, it is that badass. Maybe I'm fanboying, I don't know. This iPad so far has been beyond my expectations, so I'm a little bit excited about it. For me, just having such a tiny 11 inch powerhouse is everything I've wanted, especially without a smaller MacBook option available. And not to mention all those wholesome things you can still do with an iPad, not that this one's any different than the older ones, but I love doing things like FaceTiming with the grandparents or just catching five or 10 minutes to myself when I really need it after a long, hard day of parenting. So yeah, whether you're a family person, a gamer, an artist, a professional, whatever the heck it is, this thing pretty much does it all and you don't really need to pretend like it doesn't or really care about what people say about the iPad. I love it. Um, if you do want to check out the Paperlike 2.1, I will have that link down below. I do appreciate you watching till the end. Till next time.